start, but you saw Youth show up on that on this first draw already with a false start, and then sit going on with the next play where Jim already had to burn one of his timeouts early first quarter at home. Something you never want to do. On second down, King to the sideline off the hands of Stewart. Dick Taylor, it's third down. Lane Robinson, the, the right guard for AM, told me last week against Sam Houston State, the O-line was shell He said this week, it was back to the fundamentals, really focusing on that first step, staying disciplined, your eyes, of course, over communication. You've got, got an experience at left tackle at center. Oh, go to the left guard. He started four games last year. Robinson, the right guard, who's all American and maybe the best guard in the country. He's playing banged up. Now, stay looking for redemption defensively after giving up 63 a week ago. On third and 11. King buying time. Throws. He's got center. And he's thrown out of bounds shy of the marker. Ray Cobb making the stop. Cobb will play the anchor linebacker position with Brendan Hammond out. And Logan Dublin will slide in where Cobb normally plays. The matchup we're really going to want to watch today. Third down as left tackle Trey Zoom going against the number nine, Nick Hampton on the edge. Nick Hampton's an NFL player. He's a big time prospect. And if he can get to third and long, that's when he's going to start salivating and make big plays. Nick Constantino, one of the best punters in the country, to kick it away. A little snap. Tyler Page, fair catch, made inside his own 20 after a 49 yard kick. Our Saturday Night Football game is presented by Capital on Pac 12. And I'll take USC to the farm to take on Stanford. That's a great quarterback like Rock Caleb Williams, Tanner McKee. Yeah, strange things happen up at the farm when, when top ranked teams go up there to play in Palo Alto. I look for a great game tonight. We have two NFL prospects playing quarterback. Should be a fun one. Now, Keep you remember last year, BUSC at the Coliseum, and he grew up a Trojans fan. He used to go to games as kid. Yeah, the one thing about Stanford is I can promise you they have no fear when it comes to USC. It's a great rivalry in college football, and it's really gone back and forth. Out of the pistol set, Amani Marshall is the running back, gets the call, finds a little sliver, and forges ahead to the 27-yard line, brought down by Jordan Gilbert in game seven. Marshall will transfer from Wake Forest. If you're just joining us, App State without Nate Noel, the Sun Belt's leading rusher last year, who is slippery, elusive, and also dangerous as pass catcher. Yeah, Nate Noel is a big time playmaker at all times. He's always a threat. But the good news for App State is they have a lot of great running backs in that room. Nice off play action. Hit. Completes. And it's a first down. A gain of seven yards. That's David Larkins, the freshman tight end. That just shows the experience of Chase Bryce there. There's no panic in the fifth-year senior. The pot's breaking down around him. He keeps his eyes down the field and delivers an accurate ball to move the chains. App State offensively lost four super senior wide receivers to graduation. And in week one against Carolina, they spread it out. Bryce committed a pass to 12 to players. Dedrick Harrington is thrown and taken down to the backfield. Denver Harris, the quarterback, true freshman, top 25 player coming out of high school. Yeah, yeah. I got up, repeat and reframe. Yeah, I was going to say, you got five stars, four stars, Under Armour All-Americans, everywhere you look. But what you just saw in that last play, App State's really struggling to get the, the run game going, and that's something they really hang their hat on. But there's such a size difference between the App State offensive line and M's defensive line. Something to really watch today. Davis, and he gets it. And takes it out to the 40-yard line, picking up six. Trail on the stop, it's third and four. And then how do you attack a big, strong defensive front? 
You run them sideline to sideline, you try to wear them out. You've already seen now a couple plays by Kevin Barre getting to the perimeter for the Mountaineers, trying to wear down that a and defense as the game goes. that a and was really trying to stress and improve upon this week. We've now seen a couple of examples of that communication just isn't quite there yet for them. Love the aggressive play call by Sean Clark. He told us yesterday, I'm going to be aggressive. I want to win the game. We saw it last week, playing for two against Carolina. Play action. Bryce eluding the person. In the AM, such a boy is sliding down after a game of seven. Now, Billy Bond Chase Price, he can make some plays with his feet now. That was a bit of a, uh, uh, it was just great coverage by AM down the field. Really no place for Chase Price to go. So he's the next best thing. Tuck the ball, keeps his eyes down the field, and gets down before he gets a big hit. Not the greatest athlete in the world, but he's big, he's strong, and he's, he's tough, and he's not afraid to run the football. And he is experienced, a sixth year senior. Peels and Marshall flank Bryce. This is the shotgun. Peels moves out. Little misdirection. And there is Davis shooting the chains for Abstin. So two drives for the Mountaineers. Hostile environment and all. And they've made it to Texas A&M territory both times. You can definitely tell that this atmosphere here at Cuff Field is not too much for this Mountain football team. It looks like they've been here before, and, and they've played great games in their past. They've put big-time programs on their schedule so that they are prepared for moments like this. Center Troy Everett. He places a veteran in Bayer Hunter. Everett is just a redshirt freshman, the lone new starter on the on offensive line. Abstin. Playing in front of 40,000 in the last week, which was his record crowd. This, this is a different sort of arena. As a program, they have done this before. And not that past prologue necessarily applies, but. Uh, they've shown well. Since 2007, Michigan is the one in bed. Tyler Page across the 35. Page did not play last season. Spent four years at SMU, using his final year with the Mountaineers. 
Uh, Brock, you played at Arizona State when you got in some of those big hostile environments. Now, what did it do to you as a quarterback and an offense? Well, let's not worry about me today. Let's talk about App State. I can promise you, Anish, that the, this Mountaineer football team, they're not going to shy away from anyone. The, the culture that they have within this program is extremely special, and they love atmospheres like this. On the ground, Harrington. A young man who's battled through a lot of injuries, a couple of torn ACLs, a broken foot. Third down now for Appalachian State. This drive has taken more than six minutes. And now Brock, to go back to that point, 07, there was the upset of Michigan. 2016, App State took Tennessee to overtime on the road. They took Penn State to overtime on the road in 2018. 2019, they beat South Carolina and North Carolina. I'm telling you, Anish, there's just something within this program where they thrive off of environments like this, and they relish this opportunity. Here's Peoples up the middle. He's going to be close, but a little shy. I'd expect to see Coach go for it here. He's extremely aggressive when he crosses the 50-yard line. I'd be shocked to see his field goal team running out there right now. And he told us they sequence plays when they're in four-down territory. So they've got one in the holster. Look for this ball to go outside so App State can use their speed versus the big defense. Peoples. First down, App State at the 25 of Texas A&M. And then again, when you have a 225-pound running back, maybe you just shoot it right down the A-gap. Peoples, for his career, averages more than six a carry. Ran for 900-plus yards last year, third in the Sun Belt. An 1,100-yard rusher two years ago, including a performance for the ages in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. How about this, Brock? 317 on the ground and five TDs. Yeah, those are those are video game numbers there, partner. Here's the 12th play of the drive. Bryce rolls to his right, throws it back the other way. No one there. Smart veteran play. Receivers weren't open down the field. Screen didn't quite develop. Chase Bryce doing the next best thing, getting rid of that ball, not taking any lost yards. And that's just a savvy veteran there. You might see a younger quarterback force an air, possibly take a sack. You're not going to see that with Chase Bryce today. I love what Kevin Barbet's done early. He's called a couple screens, one to the running back. He just tried calling one to a tight end. There's shifts, there's motions. He's moving the pocket, really keeping this Aggie defense guessing right now. Bryce lofting it toward the end zone. It's caught. Did he hang on in bounds? Christian Horn has it for a touchdown. Now they may look at this one, but a TD if it stands. What a throw. What a catch. And that's what I'm saying. App State relishes these moments. Uh, it looks, it looks to me like that, that foot touches the white line as he's coming down. If that's the case, this is definitely a no, no catch, no touchdown. Now that foot seemed to land right on the line. So they will look upstairs, and this likely will be reversed. I love the aggressiveness by the Mountaineers on offense. Chase Bryce throws a tremendous deep ball. Had some great success with, with throwing go routes last week. Finally catching AM and m and man-to-man defense, taking a shot. Yeah, partner right there, you can see that foot's on the white line when he comes down. How about pylon cam? You got a close-up. Now, this should be a quick review. Horn had a touchdown last week.
But so far, Brock, what we talked about with the coaches for App State yesterday, it's come to fruition. No fear. Fourth down, they're willing to go for it. They're willing to take shots. After further review, the receiver did not get possession inbound. And that's the right call. Yeah, to your point, I'm not surprised. You, you could tell when App State came off the bus yesterday at the hotel, they're a confident football team. You know, some obviously would say the underdog, they, they, they assume the underdog role in situations like this. But to them, they don't feel like they're the underdog. When you're at the poker table or the blackjack table and you can hit on 17, uh, there's a, a freedom and a liberty that comes with that. That's just a different mentality, and that's what the Mountaineers have. Third and 10 now. Two tight ends. Late pressure. Bryce flushed. Incomplete out of bounds. It's fourth down. Just nowhere to go with the football there. a and m secondary did a tremendous job in man-to-man -man defense. Having a guy for a guy and just putting a blanket coverage out there and not allowing Chase Bryce to find any open receiver. So Michael Hughes will come on for the first field goal attempt of his collegiate career, replacing Chandler Staten, the Sun Belt's all-time leading scorer. From 42. Off the upright, no good. Now they wrote beautifully, a long drive. They just could not punctuate a 15-play clock-chewing march, but it ends in a missed field goal by Hughes, still scoreless at Kyle Field. Introducing the electric XP Lite. This new model is just 46 pounds and its 48 volt system achieves a top speed of 20 miles per hour, making it the best pound for pound e-bike in the industry. This e-bike is filled with innovative features and includes a throttle to help you go the distance. It's our most compact and affordable design to date. With three accessories. And college football is presented by Slay, the TV you love for a price you'll love. Nobody stayed up past their bedtime to attend the Midnight Yell last night, one of many, many storied traditions at Kyle Field. Second possession for Texas A&M after Hughes missed the 42-yard field goal. Aggies got off to a slow start last week. Haynes King will keep it, and he gets close to the 31. Let's check in with Taylor. Well, Anish, App State certainly not scared of the environment here at Kyle Field, but one thing they were aware of is how hot it is. I have this thermometer that measures the heat index down here on the field. About 107 is what it feels like down here. And if you remember, this team plays in Boone, North Carolina, where the average high temperature this time of year is 71 degrees. And so they took a lot of steps this week, wearing hoodies in practice, sitting in a sauna before practice to be prepared for this afternoon. A chain tripped up. Uh, Boone up in the mountains of North Carolina. And uh, this is, Brock, this is, this is Texas in September. Yeah, it is. The heat is one of those things you're just not going to be able to avoid. You know, the one thing I'd say right now with AM's offense is they need to find some urgency. You know, they came out a little bit sluggish. I would love to see King here try to find his senior target, Anaya Smith, and get him involved in this game. Anaya is that type of player that can really spark an offense and get everyone going. Three man rush. King lost the football. It's picked up by his own lineman Robinson. It came out again, and App State has it inside the AM 30. DeAndre Dingle Prince covered it up.
And that's that App State pass rush. They just play hard, they play fast, they pin their ears back. You're gonna see right here, just Jalen McLeod overpowering the right side of the offensive line and making a huge play for that Mountaineer defense. And that's how this defense plays. They're, they're not scared to go against anyone. They're gonna play hard, they're gonna play fast, and they're gonna make big plays. And their defensive coordinator, Dale Jones, told us, hey, after last week giving up 63, 500 plus yards, they got over it quickly. Watch for a shot to the end zone here by App State off the quick turnover. They're now in scoring area. Watch for a play to the end zone. Sudden change. Instead, it's Peoples. Battering Ram all the way to the 26, tackled by Chappelle. AM missing some pieces today defensively. No Andre White, their middle linebacker. No Jalen Jones, their starting corner. Not expected to see Walter Nolan either. He was the number one player in the ESPN 300, the five-star freshman defensive tackle. And also without tight end Max Wright and Bryce Foster, who is competing to be the starting center. Bryce will take a shot. And he overthrew Robinson. Anish would like to see Chase Bryce keep that ball in bounds there and give his receiver a chance to make a play. Now, Brock, third down, seven to go from the 26. I've got to imagine you've got two plays here considering Hughes on the last drive missed that 42-yard field goal. You're exactly right, especially with how, how aggressive coach is with four down territory. I'd expect that, but he is also very confident in his kicker. Free play. Bryce takes a shot incomplete, and third and seven's about to become third and two. There's another flag down by the goal line. And Sean Clark was out on the field off the sideline, getting into it with the officials. That's a new emphasis yep. in, in 2022. You are not allowed to leave those white lines inside that coach's box. And he was clearly running down the sideline there to have a conversation with the officials. Three flags on the field. There's one at the seven yard line as well. There are multiple fouls on the play. Offside defense, number 30, in the neutral zone at the snap, is declined. Pass interference, defense number seven is accepted. It's a 15-yard penalty, carries an automatic first down. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct on the head coach for Appalachian State. His first of the game, that's a 15-yard penalty, it will be first and 10. Like we said earlier, that's going to be a big emphasis this year with coaches staying within those white lines. Looking at the replay here, love the aggressive shots down the field. Just too much hand contact early by Chappelle. Love the aggressive calls. Would really like to see Chase Bryce give his, his receivers a chance to make a play on those throws. But nevertheless, definitely being aggressive early. So it's first and 10, essentially at the same spot. 26-yard line, 35 seconds to go in the opening quarter, and no score. Chappelle. App State, sorry, Brock, has been in Texas A&M territory on all three of its drives. Robinson in motion. Bryce fakes it to him, down the seam. He wants Peoples, and it's broken up by Chappelle. Chappelle's a name that we're really going to want to listen for today. The guy's a ball hawk. He wants to squat on plays. He wants to try to make big plays and get interceptions. He's definitely going to get his hands around the ball. You're going to see here, great play call, but once again, Chappelle stepping in at the last second. 
knocking that ball down, getting the pass break up. But a great job by App State sending a shift, then a motion to cause a lot of communication on that Aggie defense and sparks an open receiver down the field. Just need to get Chase Bryce to drive that ball before Chappelle can make a play. Marshall in the backfield, the wake transfer, looking to bounce to the outside, and he's devoured. Chris Russell leading the AM charge. A flag is down. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 24. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And boy, the penalties coming at the worst times for the Aggies. Yeah, that's the stuff that will keep a coach up late at night. You never want to beat yourself, especially when you're playing great opponents. And that just comes down to being disciplined. Yeah, you see there, getting a hand on that face mask by Chris Russell. And that's those things, like I said, a and going to have to clean up to stop hurting themselves on these drives. Marshall gets the call out of the pistol. Breaks the tackle, surges inside the 10. Another flag is down. A lot of penalty markers. Two against App State, four against AM so far. Personal foul, face mask, defense number seven. Wow. Goal, Here we go again. Just. Once again, you cannot hurt yourself, especially when you're playing an opponent like App State. We've seen false starts. We've now seen defensive holding. We've seen back-to-back -back face masks. AM's going to have to clean this up. They're going to have to clean it up rather quickly. Final seconds ticking off in this first quarter. We're scoreless, but App State has run 23 plays. Texas A&M just seven. App State has held the ball for more than 11 minutes. And when the second quarter begins, App State will be knocking on the door. Scoreless through 15 minutes here at Kyle Field. My hair started thinning. App State dominated the ball, dominated time of possession in the first quarter. They begin the second quarter with a first and goal at the Texas A&M four. Robinson in motion. Marshall up the gut. Touchdown, Appalachian State. Boy, App State fooled me there. Sent the motion. They had a mismatch up top. 6-2 wide receiver Christian Horn <clears throat> on a 5'10 Deuce Harmon. Thought the play was going out there, but why would you do that when you have a 220-pound back that you can just send right down the middle and let them muscle it into the end zone? App State's here to play. The extra point by Hughes is good. They're in Goliath's house, but they brought a few slingshots. They it's 7 0 Appalachian State. Let's not forget what Jimbo Fisher said this week. Yeah. He said the Mountaineers, regardless of what conference they would play in, they'd be a top half team, if not one of the best teams in that conference. And he also included the SEC in that conversation. Since the start of the 2014 season, App State has 80 wins. The only schools with more, Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma, and Georgia. That's not bad company to no. be in. They've been a dominant team in the Sun Belt. Four conference titles since joining the league and moving up from FCS. They've averaged 10-plus wins the last six seasons. 
played for the league title a year ago. If there's one thing the Mountaineers know how to do, that's win football games and play tough football. That's what they do. Devin A. Chain will run this out. A dangerous return man. And he's taken down shy of the 25-yard line. Brock A&M's got the ball. This will be their third possession. They've only run seven plays. They've had it for three and a half minutes. How do you find a rhythm when you haven't had the ball? You know what you do? You throw out your entire playbook, and you go to Haynes King on the sideline, and you say, what are your five favorite plays? And that's all you call on this drive until you get your quarterback and your offense settled into this football game. The give is to A-Chain. And he muscles his way to the 30. Devon A-Chain last year led the SEC, averaging seven yards per carry. Ran for 900 plus as the backup to Isaiah Spiller. If he can get the ball in space, he's a threat to make a house call. Yeah, and that's how you get your offense started as well. You give it to your big play threat. A chain, he can bust a big play at any given moment. Great job starting the drive with him. King over the middle, and Nia Smith makes the catch. Takes a big hit, picks up a first down. We welcome those of you who watched Kansas State knock off Missouri on ESPN2 here at Kyle Field. Yes, App State up to its old tricks again with a 7-0 lead early in the second quarter on Texas A&M. Haynes King lost the football and was able to cover it up. And Ishraf, Brock Osweiler, Taylor McGregor, Brock so far. The problem for AM, they have not had the ball. App State had the ball for more than 11 minutes in that opening quarter. They punch it in on the first play of the second quarter. Anish, how do you slow a very talented Texas AM offense? Well, you don't let them get on the field and you keep the ball away from them. And that's exactly what App State has done thus far in the game. On top of that, what you just saw there with the fumble. A&M's had multiple plays like that. They keep hurting themselves with penalties, and they just can't get into a rhythm. Five penalties in that first quarter. King launches downfield for Stewart, incomplete. Looking for the five-star freshman as we go down to Taylor. Well, Jimbo Fisher's message to Hayne King and his receivers was clear. We have to get going. Haynes told me this week in practice the number one message was immediacy. They clearly have not done that, and Jimbo Fisher clearly not happy about it on the sideline. Yeah, and watch here. You're going to see Nick Hampton for App State. This is the down and distance he wants. He wants third and long. The great pass rusher for the Mountaineers. He's already disrupted this game in the first quarter. Watch him down here at the bottom of your screen working on a young tackle. King, who's got great speed, gets the corner. Midfield staying in bounds. Jimbo Fisher made no bones about it. Haynes King is one of the fastest players on this team, and he gives them an elusive element of quarterback they didn't really have last year. He is. Coach said that he's going to be a great threat, not only passing the ball and down the field, but with his legs. You saw there that true speed that, that Haynes has. He's truly a unique talent and a tremendous athlete. A gain of 31. King last year saw his season end in week two. Suffered a broken leg. Flips it to Anias Smith. That's now 25 straight games with a catch for Smith, who had a career day last week. Six catches, 164, two long TDs. So when you have an offense sputtering in the first quarter like the Aggies were, what do you do? You get it to your veteran playmakers. You get it to your junior A-chain, and you get it to your senior Anias Smith. That's what they're doing on this drive. Watch them to continue to feed those guys as they move down the field. 
Smith lined up in the slot. He can line up anywhere. Now A chain has a big hole. They won't catch him. Touchdown, A chain. Right on cue, those are those playmakers that we're talking about. A-Chain has the ability to take the ball the distance anytime he touches it. And like you saw there, no one even laid a hand on him on that touchdown run. He has world-class sprinter speed. There's that, bi there's that big offensive line moving App State out of the way. A-Chain does the rest. We got a tie ball game. Welcome back, everybody. Carol Lomano, Bill Ellis, Phil Murphy with you. Nate Noel, who is their leading rusher for App State, he is unavailable in today's game because he suffered a right ankle injury in last week's game. He was a game-time decision, barely warmed up, and Coach Sean Clark saying before the game he's unavailable. So to keep in mind in this atmosphere against this opponent. So that means more of Amani Marshall, more of Daytrick Harrington. It is a deep running back room. And that's Cameron Peoples. Another first down for App State. They're close to midfield, and Brock, they have been in Texas A&M territory on every drive today. They have, and speaking of that culture, what does App State do great, and what have they done great for the last decade, 20 years? They run the football, and you see that toughness right there. You see that determination. We don't care that it's third and six. You want to play man-to-man -man against us and get a couple guys out of the box? We're going to run for that first down, and that's what App State's doing right now. And that play call probably told you it was four down territory, even for minus. App State has run twice as many plays as AM. Blitz. Bryce is hit. Ball is out. No whistle. That's a live football. Fadil Diggs racing down the sideline. Scoop and score. Texas AM. They will likely look at that, but if it stands, the pendulum is swung. Well, the question now becomes, was the arm going forward when that ball comes out? Boy, it's pretty close there, partner. We're going to need to see that replay a couple times. Looks to me Previous play is under like he's certainly eight. attempting to get that ball off. You know, that, that I think when plays are this close, it really boils down to what the initial ruling on the field was. You can tell his arm is going forward. Does he have con where does he lose control of the ball? That becomes the question. It does. And again, here's the important part. You mentioned it. The ruling on the field was that it was a fumble return for a touchdown. Now, that arm's going forward. The ball comes out. No, it would not surprise me if this is overturned, right? You're right. And, and obviously, as we all know, there needs to be indisputable video evidence to overturn it. But I think we can see enough here that that arm is going forward. That should be an incomplete pass. Yeah, you know, on, on as we see more and more of this replay, if his arm was not going forward, I just don't think that football would travel forward at all. And you see it going there two, three yards forward. I think this is going to be an easy, incomplete pass. And yeah, there's a quiet Paul over the crowd here. I think anticipating what you just said. Now, if you're on the A&M sideline, you know you want to take this momentum and run with it because this is what you've been looking for for two weeks. possession of the ball with his arm coming forward. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. 
second down at the Appalachian 46-yard line. You got to be sure today. We saw Texas, Alabama earlier. Intentional grounding, safety. Now, as much as we've as we've talked about Chase Bryce being a veteran player, this is one of those plays where he needs to recognize the blitzing safety, Damani Richardson, coming off the edge and realize that he does not have a blocker for him. And he needs to either abort that fake with the running back and get the ball thrown away or slide with his feet. But this is one of those situations you would hope your veteran quarterback can see that blitzer at the top of your screen and either tell his running back to go block him and pick him up because I have a big play down the field or you got to find a way to get rid of it. So second and 10 now after the reversal. Two tight ends. Marshall, the running back. The give is to Marshall. Fights ahead to midfield. It brings up third down. And again, given what Sean Clark has shown us so far, this is four down territory. Anish, how great has this been for the Mountaineers? Noel, one of their stud running backs, out with an injury. And they don't blink. It doesn't matter who's been carrying the ball today. They're making the first miss. They're, they're landing for. They're getting extra yards. It's just so impressive, the run game that the Mountaineers have. What you miss, though, without Noel is that game-breaker ability. The home run threat. Press coverage on the outside. Now Denver Harris backs off. Bryce. Little screen game, and that's caught by Eli Wilson, the tight end. He's going to be a little shy, and I got to imagine Sean Clark goes for it. Yeah, great job moving the pocket once again. We call those breather plays for a quarterback. Don't. There's not a whole lot of reading to the defense. You just do it. Sell a great fake to the running back. Make sure you get your depth running out of the pocket and find the open receiver down the field on that levels play. Amani Marshall, the 6'2", 220-pound bruiser who scored the App State touchdown is the running back. Marshall straight ahead. First down Appalachian State. And what has to concern the Aggies defensively, App State has shown the ability on every single drive to move the ball, to move the chains. They have been in App State, they've been in AM territory now on all four possessions. Yeah, and not just move the chains and move the ball, they're doing it with attitude. App State, some of their offensive line, they, they have guards that weigh 285 pounds, and on the AM side, they have 325 pound defensive tackles. And App State saying, I don't care, I'm gonna go right at you and I'm gonna run this football at you and pick up first down after first down. Undersized up front is Harrington. Makes it to the 40, but this is an offensive line. The Bulls, they're known as, they return four starters, and as a unit, they were a semifinalist for the Joe Moore Award a season ago, which goes to the best O-line in the country. Michigan ultimately won the award. Yeah, that says everything about this unit led by Cooper Hodges at right tackle. Like I said, when they play opponents like this that are highly ranked, they act as though there's no emblem on their helmet and they're willing to play anyone. And you can see that playing out in front of our eyes right now. Here's the blitz. It's picked up. Bryce chucks it downfield. Caught, but out of bounds. Caden Robinson could not hold on in bounds. Looked like he juggled it just a little bit at the bottom of the catch. You see here, it He's selling the five-yard quick out in man-to-man -man coverage, wheeling it up into a go route. But in order for that to be a catch, he needs to remain possession all the way through the catch while he's on the ground. And it looks like he kind of bobbles it there for a second. Nevertheless, I love the attack mode that App State's playing with. Run, 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 and let's take a shot down the field. Run, 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 take a shot. Very impressive by the Mountaineers. Well, we will get another review. Anything that you saw on the replays, Brock, that would change your mind? I don't think so. Like I said, in order for that to be a catch, the wide receiver needs to remit, retain possession all the way through the catch. And it looks like as soon as he hit the ground there, he bobbled it for a second and then regained it. 
to me that's an incomplete pass. We'll take a pause. Hopefully we have a verdict when we come back. When safe drivers save for not. And Ashraf, Brock Osweiler, Taylor McGregor, the call on the field will stand. So it will be an incomplete pass. They were reviewing this. Yeah, you can see here as he comes down, he doesn't retain possession all the way through the catch. That ball taps the ground for just a half a second. And if you see that, it's going to be an incomplete pass every single time. So that's third and five now from the 38 of Texas A&M. Again, four down territory for App State. Daytrick Harrington into the game at running back. 12th play of the drive. App State had a 15 play drive earlier. Davis in motion. Harrington stood up. Adele got in there. It's fourth down. And they're going for it. Right on cue, just as expected. Coach Clark wants to be extremely aggressive when he crosses the 50 yard line. And thus far, he's holding true to his word. It's pretty much four down territory anytime he crosses the 50. Love the mentality by the Mountaineers. Two for two on fourth down so far. Three man rush. Bryce hit. Heaves it downfield. Incomplete for Horn. And AM takes over. Five and a half to go in this opening half. A close one at Kyle Field. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Anish Roth, Brock Osweiler, Taylor McGregor. 7-7, seven, seven, five and a half to go second quarter. Yeah, credit AM's defense, but I think this is one where Bryce wish he had back. The receivers do a great job of clearing downfield, and you'll see in the middle of your screen a wide open tight end that could have caught the ball and easily picked up that first down. That's one that Bryce is going to wish he had back. But once again, credit AM's defense on the stop. Haynes King under pressure and taken down. Jalen McLeod. Second sack of the day by Appalachian State. It's second and 16. So you're seeing what both teams want to do. App State is a pin your ears defense back. Let's go get after the quarterback. Let's play hard and fast. And you see A&M there wanting to take a shot out of the timeout. A deep pass down the field. Haynes King throws a great ball, but unfortunately is not able to get that one off. And App State's defensive line has been very disruptive this, thus far. Texas A&M below 100 yards of total offense. King throwing to the sideline. It's hauled in. Yo Keith Brown, who had a touchdown catch last week, it's third down. And that's how you know a young quarterback's growing. It's second and 14. An inexperienced guy's going to say, hey, i got to force the ball down the field. King doesn't blink. He takes the quick out there. He gets half that distance back, and now it's third and manageable. Great play by King. And when we talked to the coaches, they said that was part of the maturation they wanted to see from week one to week two. Yeah, they said he's very intelligent, and he's a quick learner, and that play shows that. Four-man twist. King steps up, taken down from behind. He picked up two. It's Nick Hampton. One of the top sack artists in all of college football. That's not a sack, but it's fourth down, and Constantino comes on. Nick Hampton, the all-world pass rusher. You see him there once again. You know, we're talking about how disruptive the App State defense can be, and you see how hard and fast they play. Very impressive. Tyler Page, the SMU transfer, waits at the 10. Fair catch signal, and it's made at the 12. Nick Hampton had a couple of sacks last week. 
a weight room menace. He can sumo deadlift 600 and take down quarterbacks as well. So you got fine. Get week one of the NFL started with the countdown crew, 10 a.m. Eastern. Michelle Beisner Buck sits down with Dak Prescott ahead of the Cowboys hosting the Bucks. Plus, an all access look at Devontae Adams' offseason before his Raiders debut. Monday night, Broncos, Seahawks, Russell Wilson just signed a nice new extension with Denver, making his return to Seattle after the big offseason trade. 7-7 at Kyle Field, 325 to go. First half, Chase Price on the rollout, has his tight end Pearson, who gets it out to the 15 for a gain of three. Second down and seven. And for the for the first half, Brock, App State has played keep away. Yeah, they really have. How do you beat a team that is just talent loaded across the board? Well, you don't let them touch the ball. You don't let their playmakers go out there and do what they're used to doing on Saturday afternoons. And that's what App State's done. They've They've won the time of possession. They've had more plays, and they're keeping that AM offense on the sideline. Marshall looking for the edge. Uh uh. In the embrace of Terry and Lee. It's a great timeout there by Jimbo Fisher. I know what he's thinking. He's hoping he gets a stop here on third down, and he wants to give his offense as much time as possible to try to go down before halftime and get some points and build some momentum going into that third quarter. Texas A&M will receive that third quarter kickoff. Thank you. Yeah, Jimbo right now on his mind is a 14-point swing. If he can get App State stopped here, get the ball back, go score before halftime, get a touchdown, and then get that opening third quarter possession and drive down the field and go get seven more that's that 14 point swing that he's hoping for get the momentum back get this stadium rocking again and try to take a hold of this football game now, right now app state has just controlled the ball they've controlled the clock they have advanced into texas a&m territory on every drive today yeah app state's really played this game how they wanted to like i said they've retained possession on offense They've made some big throws from the drop back game. They've made throws outside the pocket, moving the launch point off of boots and nakeds, and they've also ran the ball extremely well. So App State's really played this game the way they want to. We'll see if they can finish the second quarter that way as well. Tied on the scoreboard, it's third and nine. I'd expect some pressure here by AM. On the ground, Marshall. Gets across the 20, Russell the stop. He's going to be a little shy. And they say no. He got it. That was just so impressive. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's not the first time today App State has ran for a third and long and converted it. It's, it's just so impressive. You see here, AM is very aggressive. They're bringing a blitz on this play. And App State, how do you defend really a blitz on, on third long? Down. You pop a draw right down Previous the middle. Great review. play call by Kevin Barbe. Yeah, they're going to review the spot. The initial spot looked to be short. I agree. Now, given we're up about seven stories, but we, 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 have, a, we have pretty good <laughs> eyesight. And, and you're right. From the initial look, I would say the runner's short there. But it'll be interesting to see what this replay looks like. Appalachian State last week lost 63-61 to North Carolina. They scored 40 points in the fourth quarter of that game. A&M, a shutout of Sam Houston here at home. Another look. Remember, that yellow line is not exact. It's the unofficial first down marker. And where's the ball when that knee or elbow goes down? Yeah, that's exactly what we need to look for. Not obviously where the runner finished the play but where the tip of that ball is when his knee first hits the ground. And the big thing to remember, these are plays that are often hard to overturn. After further review, because if there is Paul even Perry a shred of ground, down, short of the line that's again. why the initial ruling is so key. Be fourth down. And they just reversed the call. So they went back, they looked at it, it's fourth down, and I know Sean Clark likes to roll the dice, but this is minus territory. 
He's got the offense coming back out there. Hard count, or do you think he actually goes for it? Well, put it this way. I'm not going to be surprised if he goes for it, but if I'm the coach, I'm doing a hard count. I'm going to see if I can get a quick, easy five, automatic first down, and then if I can't, I'll burn a timeout or just take the delay of game and punt the ball deep. AM has jumped a couple of times, five penalties in this first half. And I'm not flinching. Play clock at three, at two, and now App State calls a timeout. Smart call there by Sean Clark, head coach, App State. Your team's playing a great game. You're in a tie ball game. You don't want to lose any of this momentum that you've gained in the first half and give that dangerous AM offense a short field. And you just bled off 25 seconds. Absolutely. Anytime you can run this clock down, especially late in the second quarter, make AM's offense more job more difficult. It's a great play and just just great game management by Sean Clark there. College football rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Texas AM, preseason number six. They stayed put after week one. For what it's worth, the last eight national champions all started in the top six of the AP poll. Yeah, for whatever reason, that's just how it's kind of shook out. It always seems like it comes down to about two or three teams every year. Who's going to compete for that national title? But I wouldn't be against having a sleeper slide in there late in the season. High snap. Howell gets it off. Smith retreats, makes the fair catch inside the 30 after a 50-yard punt. A&M's got one timeout, 154 to go tied at seven and uh, Brock what more do you want to see from AM's offense besides just being out on the field they haven't had many opportunities to do that I want to see them get Haynes King the young quarterback going a little bit you know I, I want to see them call some some screens to get him comfortable some quick game just some throws that you know he doesn't have to read the entire defense just throws where maybe he's just reading half the field or it's almost an RPO type throw where unless it's going to be a layup completion just go ahead and hand it off because we all know King has a ton of talent he's just young and he needs to settle into the football game and an offensive play caller can help that quarterback along with that he won a three man quarterback derby in training camp gets rid of it quickly too high nearly picked Stephen Jones from App State was racing in. Jones had five interceptions, including three pick sixes a season ago. Yeah, this is a ball hawk secondary. When you look at how many interceptions in the career of this secondary, it's incredible. But, you know, once again, we were just talking about getting Haynes started, and Coach calls an RPO for him right out the gate, just kind of a layup swing pass throw out to the sideline. And unfortunately, King's not able to make that throw and, and get himself into a rhythm. King threw a couple of picks last week. Designed quarterback run, nowhere to go. Logan Dublin, the eraser, it's a loss. And now a timeout by App State, their second. 143 to go in the half, third and long at Texas A&M. Well, if you can't get King started by throwing the ball, let's try to get him started with running. That's what they do here because he's so talented with so much speed. But you're going to see Logan Dublin, big 4-0 for App State, just sticking his nose in there and making a play and Anish you tell me man from up here it just seems like App State is just playing with a little different motor and a little bit different energy. Now this a and team preseason number six nobody is disputing the talent on this roster they have imported two phenomenal recruiting classes back to back the one they brought in this year the true freshman on paper it's been billed as maybe the greatest recruiting class of all time 24 ESPN 300 prospects five players in the top 12 they got the top two DNs the top two D tackles just a wealth of riches but they're young and we saw youth prop up last week we saw youth crop up again this week this is an accolade filled roster I, I gotta be honest I got cramps in my hand writing Under Armour All-American prepping for this game but the only thing that you can do is get these guys game reps. They need to settle in, find some chemistry within each other. 
And that's what they're trying to do right now. On third down, King throws on the run. And that is going to be incomplete. Wanted Smith. Would have been a first down had he stayed in bounds. King trying to make a throw outside the pocket to his all world playmaker, Anaya Smith. I think Smith's foot's just he's out of bounds there. You can see it right there on the white line. Jimbo and King having a little conversation after that play. Jimbo pointing downfield. Would love to be down there to hear what they were saying. Constantinou shows off that big leg. Page from the 22. Takes it to about the 35. Let's check in with Kevin Connors in the studio. And he's coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. We'll have much more on that dynamite showdown in Austin, Texas, how number one Alabama survived. Plus, Ohio State lights it up behind the son of an NFL legend. And we'll check in on the Johnny Majors Classic. Tennessee and Pitt living up to expectations. Coming up when you join me and Sam Acho at the half. Anish? And Sam Acho's blazer. I mean, that's worth the price of admission for halftime. 127 to go one time out. How do you maneuver these final 87 seconds, Brock? Well, the key to this drive right now is getting a positive first play. Anything going forward is a good start for this drive. It's Peoples driven back by Adele. When you're talking two-minute football, like I said, you want to start your drive with a positive first play and get yards. The second key is make sure you don't have any negative plays. You don't want to go backwards, no penalties, no sacks. And then somewhere within the drive, you want to find an explosive play down the field. If you can do that, over 90% of the time, you're going to find points on your two-minute drive. App State content to let the clock run. The Aggies receive the second-half kickoff. I'd like to see a little more tempo here by App State. I understand they don't want to give the ball back to AM, but you still have an opportunity to go get some points right now. And Peoples to the 39. It'll bring up third down. Both teams have a timeout. App State does not have to run a play. Surprised Jimbo Fisher there. Didn't take that timeout and possibly force a, a stop on third down and a pump by App State. Maybe you get a block, maybe you get a big return, but it seems like he just wants to go into his locker room and fix some things within his team. App State ran twice as many plays as Texas A&M. The Mountaineers had the ball for more than 20 minutes in that opening half. On the scoreboard, though, we're all even. App State and Texas A&M all tied at seven. To the studio now, and Kevin Connors. A very entertaining 30 minutes there in College Station. Anish, come on inside. It's the Geico Halftime Report. Let's get you going with number two Georgia off that Picasso a week ago against Oregon. Michael Hires tries to escape the sack. He's going to get hit hard, and that Georgia D is swarming again. The, the dogs continue to hunt. <laughs> yeah. Stetson Bennett finding the end zone. And he's got underrated speed. We talk about his arm, but he's underrated in the pocket and outside of the pocket. Looking good this week again. I'm up here with Dylan Bell. Stetson Bennett, what a season so far. What a season so far. He's building on everything he did last year in a national championship. 23 to nothing. The dogs are hunting right now over on the SEC Network. Tennessee and Pitt, the Johnny Majors Classic. Israel Abanakanda is a name we need to know. We need to know because this is a 76-yard touchdown, the longest of his career. But mind you, he's been doing this for a long, long time. All the You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Sling TV. Appalachian State hanging with the number six team in the country. Halftime at Kyle Field. Mountaineers seven, Aggies seven. 
and Ishraf Brock Osweiler will get a report from Taylor McGregor in just a moment. You look back at the first 30 minutes, what jumps out to you in this game? Well, it's really App State controlling the clock in time of possession. App State's held the ball for almost the entire half. They're running the football extremely well, and they're extending drives, which ultimately keeps the football away from AM's talented offense. Yeah, App State has had the ball for 20-plus minutes so far, more than half of what AM has had. And then App State has run twice as many plays as AM. They have, and ultimately it's because AM can't stay on the field. They have no offensive rhythm. They're currently one for five on third down with only four first downs for the game. I don't care who you're playing. That's just not going to get it done offensively. And there's just no way to get into an offensive rhythm with production like that on third down. Down to Taylor. Coach App State controlling the time of possession. How do you get them off the field? Well, we got to get stops on, on defense. We got to get off the convert two or three fourth downs, but they're managing the clock. We got to stop the run, win the downs, and be good on third down. They've popped some third down runs. And offensively, we got to get move the ball. We we come out the first drive, got a nice drive, get a penalty uh, for not snapping the ball. Then we next drive, we get a pass protection, got a guy open, gonna make a throw. Then we score. Then we come back, got another, we miss, have a double team block, a guy don't double team. We got to play clean. We, we, the plays are there, we got to back in the execute, keep our poise, get the ball on offense. We got to get some stops on defense and win the field position, get off on the field on third down. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And that was Taylor with Jimbo Fisher before the teams went into the locker room. Haynes King's first throw here in the third quarter, incomplete for Evan Stewart. King now 6 of 11, 46 yards. Neither team has been really great offensively. AM had the one touchdown run from 26 by A Chain. Other than that, we have not seen many explosive plays in this game. King screen pass. Here's A Chain in space. And torpedoes ahead to the 30, a gain of five. Taylor, what did Sean Clark tell you? Well, he was about as loose as I've ever seen a coach at halftime. He said, we're going to go out there and have fun. He loved the fact that his team is held onto the time of possession, but he said, now it's time to take deep shots. He said, we're going to make A&M's corners really work here and get those explosive plays. Keep your eyes here on those edge rushers for App State. Extremely talented in Nick Hampton and Jalen McLeod. Hampton drops back into coverage. King throwing. And that is caught by Anaya Smith. He needed five. He got six. A first down for Texas A&M. And that's a start for this offense, just moving the chains and staying on the field. That's the playmaker you really want to try to feature early in this, in this series. Anaya Smith, he's the senior. He's the leader of this offense. The more you can get the ball into his hands, I think good things will happen for that A&M offense. Third catch for Smith. A chain turns the corner with a nice pickup on first down. Trey Cobb made the tackle, second and four coming up. This feels like such a critical series and possession for AM's offense here. They really need to get something going, build some chemistry. Using tempo. Back to A chain. A yard shy. It's third down and one. And is this the change up you're talking about? Build chemistry continuity. How about some tempo? Well, I love the tempo change because sometimes as young players, you're just out there thinking too much. And I'm not saying that's what a and doing, but you almost get that sense. So how do you how do you fix that? You just go fast so the players don't have time to think. Anaya Smith is the slot receiver. Screen to Smith. Erased by Nick Ross for a loss. App State. Read it all the way. It's fourth down. God, you got to love the open field tackle. That's just old school right there. Wrapping up, getting the guy to the ground. Great play by safety Nick Ross coming up right here. Textbook tackle. If you're AM, that's certainly not the start you were hoping for. You try to shake things up, try to create a spark with a little bit of tempo in your offense. You got a couple yards, but the drive ended. Constantino to kick it away. Page catches it out of bounds. A 39-yard punt. 
So AM picked up a first down, but the drive stalled. App State on offense when we come back. You're watching the SEC on ESPN, Appalachian State, and a sixth ranked Texas AM tied at seven here in the third. Look at the last four games for App State against top 10 opponents. Obviously, the win at Michigan, which put the program on the map nationally, despite the success they had had at the FCS level. Last two times out, Penn State and Tennessee went to overtime on the road in 100,000-seat stadiums. And Cameron Peoples running with purpose for a gain of four. And that really plays into how App State wants to play this football game. They want to run the football on first and second down, control the clock, and put themselves in third and manageable. Jimbo said at halftime, he said, we have to stop the run. Great start to the drive if you're a Mountaineer fan. Mountaineers without Nate Noel today, the Sun Belt's top rusher a season ago. Four-man pressure. Bryce lofts it downfield for Davis. Incomplete, covered well by the safety Gilbert. You're not going to make a living taking big shots down the field against this Texas A&M secondary between Antonio Johnson, Damani Richardson, Tariq Chappelle. They got some studs on that back end. It's going to be tough to move the ball down the field against the, the Aggie secondary today. Safety blitz from Richardson. Bryce submerged. Shamar Turner, their top recruit in the 2021 class, creating chaos in the backfield. That's exactly what AM needed. You're going to see here AM bringing the pressure off the edge. Ultimately, that pocket collapses. AM was playing man to man defense down the field. Just nowhere for Bryce to go with the ball. Great defensive play by Texas A&M. And now a chance with special teams. The dangerous Anaya Smith waits at the 40. Howell will punt. And he's set up inside his own five-yard line. A chance for Smith. A 50-yard punt, not much of a return. Taylor? Well, we know Jimbo Fisher has endorsed his quarterback, Haynes King, but something to keep our eyes on. Max Johnson is holding his helmet on the sideline. Brock, you were a backup quarterback. Is that something you do? You Just know, put it on. There we go. Yeah, it's not exactly the, the norm. Usually you'll see a backup quarterback with a, a hat on rather than his helmet. You hate to see the starter ever getting pulled out of the game. You know how much time and effort he puts into being the guy, but every once in a while, you need to go to the guy on the bench to create a spark for your offense. All right, so do you feel this is a make-or-break drive here for Haynes King? It very well could be. As we all know, we've talked about it all broadcast, A&M has weapons across the field. They have talent across the board, and right now we haven't seen that talent come to fruition. Sometimes a quarterback change can make that happen. A high snap, A-chain. With a nice pickup out to the 40, a gain of seven, and something to watch there. That formation with A-Chain and Anaya Smith in the backfield. Now that gave Sam Houston State some problems a week ago. It gives this offense a chance to flex them out, do some things formation-wise, and potentially trap the defense in the sub-game. What's so interesting about that formation with Anaya Smith and A-Chain in the back, backfield together is defensive coordinator Dale Jones for the Mountaineers said he almost felt like that played into their hand. That's a first down for A-Chain. There's a man down. It's Trey Cobb back at the 40-yard line. App State already down a linebacker, Brendan Harrington. Second team all-conference last year out today. Cobb slid over from Will linebacker to the anchor position that Harrington manned. And Logan Dublin got the start where Cobb normally starts. So now Trey Cobb down and 
Uh, you start to go down two linebackers on the road against Texas A&M. That creates a tall order defensively. The thing that's different about a Verbo vacation? ESPN College Football, presented by Sling TV, is brought to you by the Lexus IS. All in for the sports sedan. Now let's take a look at the Taco Bell, Live Moss student section, student sections across the country, competing to be the Live Moss student section of the year all season long. Find one better than the 12th man. Brock, your first time coming to Kyle Field. When we pulled in yesterday, your eyes got big, man. I got juiced up, man. I wanted to put on a helmet, put on some cleats, and go out there and sling the rock for one of these teams today. This, this venue is incredible. So fun to be here. A chain brought down by the Arkansas transfer, Andrew Parker. Second down, Trey Cobb, who was down before we went to break, did get up, walked off on his own power. Hey, how about the Sun Belt today? Georgia State coming within a touchdown of North Carolina. Marshall on the verge right now of an upset of Notre Dame. Marshall, a new member in the Sun Belt this season. And Appalachian State playing Texas A&M, the sixth-ranked team in the country, to a stalemate. King on second and down, second down, steps up, hits Stewart. Ball is out! App State says they have it! And they do! Wow. Wow, partner. King, King finding the mismatch there. He found his young freshman receiver, Evan Stewart, who is super talented. Mismatch on a linebacker. Feeds him the ball, but unfortunately the young Young star in the making can't hold on to the ball. Credit App State for getting that thing out. And once again, taking back the momentum in this game. Dexter Lawson, fifth year senior quarter, uh, cornerback from Bloomfield, Connecticut, Dwight Freeney's hometown, stripped the ball away, and Nick Hampton, the all conference linebacker, recovered. So App State gets it back. Second turnover of the game, both by Texas A&M, and App State scored its only touchdown off that first turnover. Let's see if they take a shot. Trickeration. This is Davis. A yard. I like Deshaun Davis. Extremely talented young man. Very explosive. I feel like any time he touches the ball, he has the chance to take it the distance. He was their top receiver last week. App State lost four super seniors to graduation from its receiving core. Peoples lined up in the slot. Motions to the backfield. He gets the call. Breaking tackles. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line. It sets up third down, and Brock, what do we know? This isn't just a, a third down. This is four-down territory. Absolutely. Sean Clark's going to use all four downs that he has allotted every possession. The guy's not afraid to go for it. But you got to love what App State's doing. They're, they're just trying to wear out this big, strong a and defense by all of these perimeter runs, speed sweeps. They're getting them running side to side. We'll see how that wears on them as the game goes. Looked like Jimbo Fisher might have been trying to call timeout. Harrington, a first down into Aggie territory, a gain of six. App State today without its top rusher from a season ago and its top rusher from week one, Nate Noel. He suffered a right ankle injury at the end of the North Carolina game, limited in practice. And we found out a few minutes before kickoff he would not play. I think the production in the run game today just speaks volumes about how much pride this offensive line with the Mountaineers, how much pride they have in their run game. It doesn't matter who's in the backfield. They're going to find yards. Play action. Bryce, eyes up field, open receiver. It's caught. Davis inside the 30, a gain of 21. And that's the one thing 
up until now that's been missing from this App State offense. They have not had many explosives. They haven't, but they're playing off of what they're doing, right? Speed sweep, inside zone, play action. AM's defense is just guess guessing every play. Screen pass, and it's Horn to the 25. And right now, you get the sense this AM defense is milling in retreat. App State the aggressor. They haven't used too much tempo today, flashing a little bit on this drive. They said they would pick their spots. I love what Kevin Barbet, the offense coordinator, is doing. He's testing the communication of this young AM defense to see if they can make calls versus tempo, motions, and shifts. Antonio Johnson showing blitz. Here he comes. It's Peoples. Bounces off one. Breaks another. And is close to a first down, finally brought down by the veteran on that defense, Damani Richardson, a four-year starter. And App State very content to be in third down when it's third and two, third and three. Of course, when you have a bruiser running back like Cameron Peoples, you see that the first guy's not getting him down. The second's not getting him down. The man is 225 pounds and running with attitude today. I love how they just keep going to this run game and saying, hey, Aggies, can you stop us? Peoples. No gain. It was Gilbert, the safety. Fourth down. Bryce looking to the sideline. Michael Hughes missed a 42-yarder earlier. And they're going to go for it. It wasn't even in question. You look right to the sideline. The staff didn't even hesitate. You knew they were going for this fourth down. They are playing to win this football game. Aggies loading up the box. You have man-to-man -man defense right now by Texas A&M. Look for a matchup at the bottom of your screen. Bryce keeps it. Turns the corner and picks up a first down. Brock App State is now three of four on fourth down. They're three of 12 on third downs. That's got to get into the psychology of the defense, doesn't it? 100%. It's wearing them out. Look at AM right now when you look out there on the field, hands are on the hips. You can tell the energy slowly getting pulled out of them. And what App State's doing, they're dictating the tempo of this game. They're dictating how this thing is getting played out, and they're doing it behind that offensive line who is in sync and playing their tails off. Bryce now splits wide. Marshall, the Wildcat quarterback. And Amani Marshall stood up after a short gain. Marshall, the lone App State touchdown today. A Wake Forest transfer, 29 carries in two seasons with the Demon Deacons. Look for Chase Bryce here. If he can catch some man-to-man -man down here in the red zone, look for him to go to Christian Horn on the outside or Caden Robinson. Two big and tall receivers at 6-2, matched up against 5-10 and 5-11 corners if he can catch man-to-man -man defense. Horn lined up at the bottom of your screen. Marshall searching for some room and he gets inside the 10 to the 9. Third down. Well, why would you throw it outside if the run game's been working all day, right? Why, why get away from it? App State holding true to who they are. On third down here, look for them to possibly move the pocket with Chase Bryce to give his offensive line a little bit of a breather play versus the big A&M defensive front. Bryce to the tight end, Pearson. Tiptoeing the sideline, did he get in? I don't App see State is saying touchdown. I didn't see a signal, did you? I didn't see a single signal by any official down there on the field. Looked like a clear-cut touchdown, though. A touchdown by Pearson. App State takes the lead, and now the point after...
coming up by Hughes. Just what Kevin Barbet wanted to do. He wants to move the pocket for Chase Bryce every once in a while, give him some breather plays. He finds his big tight end, Henry Pearson. Pearson does the rest. What a great play call there by the Mountaineers. And the side judge did signal touchdown. We might have been screened from up here. The PAT is good. And another march from the men from the mountains of Boone. Appalachian State has taken the lead on number six Texas A&M with 2.34 to go in the third. And you know what? I can't say anybody is surprised up in Boone, Boone, North Carolina. This is what the Mountaineers do. Monday Night Football with Peyton. App State today has now had three drives of at least 10 plays. They've had three drives that have chewed up six minutes or more of game clock, including the last one, which ended with a Henry Pearson touchdown catch. A chain across the 30, breaks free, he can go! A chain down the sideline, and AM with the counter punch! chain last year in that win against Alabama where he had that 96 yard kick return for a touchdown he's accounted for both scores today for the Aggies so Appalachian State lands a series of jabs to take a one score lead AM's counters the haymaker well, listen, if you can't score offensively, if you can't get any momentum going there, make sure your star player is your kick returner so he can touch the football and make a big play for your team. Credit the special teams unit there. Big blocks, big return. That is exactly what AM needed to get back into this ball game. Devon A. Chain is an All-American sprinter at Texas A&M. You get him in space, and you get him with nobody in front, he's off to El Dorado. Credit A&M, but that's exactly what App State did not want to see. App State could not give up the big play. They could not give up the easy one. Credit A&M special teams unit there for the monster play right when they needed it. part of this with the quick score AM's defense which was just on the field for six plus minutes of game clock for an 11 play app state drive you've got to go right back out there you're exactly right partner on that and that is not easy listen if you're 325 pounds playing down there where it's 105 degrees you say hey i'm glad we got the touchdown but i'm still drinking water over here i don't know if i'm ready to get back out there on the field App State will bring it out to the 25-yard line. Man down for Texas A&M. It's Terry and Lee. Right, Terry and Lee Jr. out of Tallahassee. Partner, to your point about that defensive front for AM not getting any break on the sideline, App State has somewhat of an advantage. They've been continually rotating their running back room throughout this game, as well as their wide receiver room. So I would assume those guys are still somewhat fresh, and this heat has yet to affect them. You got a lot of fresh legs on that App State offense. 
It'll be anxious to see how A&M responds to this. Taylor? Well, we talked about heat earlier, and it had gotten to about 110 here on the sideline. It is now 82, roughly, creeping up to 84 here on the sideline. But one thing to pay attention to, a and m sideline is in the shade. App State is in the sun. And that's home field advantage. Davis, the motion man, gets it on the pop pass. Russell missed the tackle. And then Chappelle with the big hit after a gain of a couple. Second down. And you can tell what App State is trying to do against AM. They told us we want to test the eyes of this young defense. Texas AM lost four starters on the defensive line. They have replenished with some immensely talented young players, but they're young. Yeah, they are young, and App State is testing them. They're running it right. They're running it left. They're doing play action. They're doing bootlegs out of the pocket, really putting a lot of pressure on the young Aggie defense. Harrington pinballing off a couple of Aggies. Really on the field as the ball carrier was down. Third down. He was down before the ball came out, so third down. You see what App State's doing, though. They're coming out, they're running the ball in first down, they're running the ball in second down. Why are they doing that? They want to run as much clock as they can to keep the ball away from AM's offense. Ardele is down. Anish, as, as much as the crowd momentum is now back into the game for A&M, you got to think if you're on the App State sideline and you potentially have a tie ball game going into the fourth quarter, that's exactly what you were hoping for when you came to Kyle Field. That's Amisha Adele, redshirt freshman from Katy. Top 50 recruit a season ago. We would called his name a lot today. He played well for that AM defense. Yeah, number 30 coming in. I'd expect some sort of pressure here by AM trying to force quarterback Chase Bryce into a quick decision here on this third down play. Mountaineers, 4 of 13 on third down. Safety blitz. Bryce able to complete to the outside. It's Stroman. Did he get enough? I think he did. They will move the chains. It's a first down. The six foot four Dalton Stroman. Here and comes that tempo. tempo. Peoples. No gain. Brock, does this score surprise you at this juncture in the game? I have to be honest, it doesn't. Uh, and it starts with watching game film all week on both of these teams meeting with the coaching staffs and you could just see in the App State eyes yesterday that this stage was not too big for them and they expected to be in this game late. You know the history of Appalachian State. Few Davids have slain a Goliath as big as Appalachian State. They'll try to do it again in College Station. Kevin and Sam, your AT&T 5G studio update. A stunner in South Bend. Marshall leading 19-15. 
pick six, Stephen Gilmore. And his older brother, Stephon Gilmore, is an NFL superstar. Like brother, like brother. Marcus Freeman becomes the first Notre Dame head coach ever to start 0-3. Marshall Anish, the 26-21 win. Marshall now in the Sun Belt. App State in the Sun Belt. It's second down and five to begin the fourth quarter. Tied at 14. The Mountaineers against number six, Texas A&M. And you're wondering, why is it second and five? Wasn't the last play of the third quarter a no game? Well, we thought that originally. Watch Cameron Peoples. Watch the A&M defense. It looks like the play is over here. There's no whistle. They even announced it. On the loudspeaker, no gain. Peoples keeps going, ends up picking five, picking up five. The whistle is blown. That sums up the game, doesn't it? One word for App State, grit. Grit. They are a tough, gritty football team. On third down, Bryce, the bootleg, gets away, steps up. Gets rid of it, completes to Stroman for a first down across midfield. What a play by Chase Bryce. Never quit playing. Doesn't matter. Comes out, beats one guy, keeps the play alive. Making one miss, making two miss. The guy's tough as nails. He's going to lay his body on the line for his team. Coach says he bleeds black and gold and loves this football program. That play shows just how much. The sixth year senior, second year with App State, after stops at Duke and Clemson. Harrington with an opening. And the secondary ball is out. Flag is down. It looked like Antonio Johnson fell on it for AM. They will sort through the carnage. You see Cooper Hodges trying to pump up the crowd. It looks like it'll stay with Appalachian State. Let's get the penalty. App State's walking back. Before the fumble, holding offense number seven. A 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, that's on the quarterback, Bryce. You know, I, I don't know exactly how a quarterback gets gets called for a holding there. I, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, Antonio the Johnson occurred. was right there. And how about the App State player, Christian Wells? He corralled the ball between his legs. Hey, you're going to try to pull off an upset on the road at this place? You'll need a couple of bounces. That was one. Anish, the, the, the saying in football is whatever it takes. And that's what App State's doing right now. First and 12, back from the 49 of AM. Second down, back to the original line of scrimmage. It's starting to feel like App State has set up this A&M defense to somewhat go for the juggler and take a shot down the field. They've ran the ball on first down, ran it on second down, ran it on first, ran it on second down. Look for them now to maybe go play action and take a shot down the field and try to shorten this drive. Bryce, there's the shot. Incomplete for Horn. No flag. Denver Harris, the true freshman in coverage. Love, love the timing of the call. Looking here. I think that's a great no call. 
Christian Horn. If anything, the receiver's kind of reaching back with his left hand, brings the defense, defense are back involved at the play. Great no call by the officials there. Let the boys play. Screen to Davis. Sidesteps a couple of defenders and moves the chains. Kevin Barbe, what a play call. Stadium's loud, defense is juiced up, ears are pinned back, they're ready to come get this quarterback. What does Kevin do? Calls a screen, gets it to his playmaker, Deshaun Davis. Offensive line gets out in front, essentially creates a punt return in space. Tremendous play call by the Mountaineers. App State has run 67 plays, 30 for Texas A&M. App State has had it for 33 plus minutes. A&M, a tick over 14. Armani Marshall. A couple. Yeah, this is where App State wants to be right now. They're in control of this game. They're getting positive yards within their run game. They're getting some man-to-man -man matchups outside. You're going to see here formation. App State putting both receivers to the top of your screen. That's telling the quarterback if it's man or zone right now. Two tight ends. Play action. Bryce throws incomplete for Robinson. And a flag at the end of the play. The All-American Antonio Johnson was in coverage. Looked like pretty good coverage, but... Pass interference. Defense 27. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Yeah, partner. To me, that was pretty good coverage. Maybe, maybe that defensive back's right hand getting on that receiver's hip. Turning him a little bit late. Maybe that's what the official saw there, but to me, that just looked like two guys playing football right there. Yeah, I'm with you. Antonio Johnson, maybe the best defensive back in America. Mel Kuyper's number one draft eligible safety. It's a first down. Peoples behind his tight end, Pearson. And bulldozes inside the 20. What a statement run by Peoples in that offensive line. Once again, you got another coverage indicator formation with both receivers lining up to the same side. App State catches AM in a zone defense there. They elect to run the football. It'll be interesting to see with these coverage indicators if they catch man to man. Do they look to the sideline and audible to a shot to the end zone? Daytrick Harrington. Going to be a little short. Third and one. Now, Brock, most of the afternoon, third and short has been four down territory. Tie game, fourth quarter. If you don't get it here, do you kick? I'm taking the points. I'm kicking the field goal. I don't know if Sean Clark's doing the same thing. But if I have a chance to get points midway through the fourth, I'm taking them. Aggie stacked the box. Harrington gets just enough. Boy, that's right at the marker. That's enough. And this is, this is when you're wondering how A&M's conditioning is for these big guys up front, right? We've talked about it all broadcast. They're 300 pounds, 315, 325, 330 up front. It's been a hot day down there on the field. App State's held the ball the majority of the game. Is that A&M defense tired? You know, you hear coaches say time of possession doesn't really matter, but 36 minutes to 14 is significant. And a whistle before the snap. 
Timeout, Appalachian State, the first of the half. Catch your breath. App State in the red zone with a first down. Alts out at 14 against AM. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Since 2014, App State has won 31 road games. Only Boise State and Clemson have more. Texas A&M, 33-1 at home against non-SEC Big 12 teams since 2010. The lone loss to Clemson in 2018. The backup quarterback for that Tigers team, the signal caller for App State right now, Chase Bryce. Bryce tunnels right back to the line of scrimmage, second down and 10. Antonio Johnson makes his presence felt. Now, don't forget, the Mountaineers can still get a first down on this drive. The sticks are right at about the five-yard line. They don't need to take all the shots into the end zone right now. They can still stick with their run game. Peoples met by Edgerin Cooper. Isaiah Rakes in there as well. It brings up a third down. And now, Brock, we've talked a lot about time of possession, length of drives. As Rakes is down now for AM. This current drive for the Mountaineers. 16 plays, 63 yards, and Appalachian State has used up more than nine minutes of game clock. That's incredible. You know, it, it, you want to talk about controlling the football game. That's how you do it. You keep AM's offense on the sideline and you run the football effectively. While the trainers attend to rakes, we'll step aside. State offensive coordinator Kevin Barbe calling one of the biggest games of his life. He's from a Texas A&M family. His wife Casey, an A&M grad. His brother and sister-in-law both went to Texas A&M. He has two nieces currently in school here. So if nothing else, it's bragging rights in the Barbe family. And depending on how this game turns out, he might be paying for dinner as well. This might be the biggest play call all afternoon for Barbe. Bryce with time over the middle, wide open. It's dropped by Wells. A slam dunk touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. And Brock, now you got a kick. Oh, man, you know Chase Bryce wants this one back. Not only did he have an open receiver coming across the middle of the field that would have stepped into the end zone without being touched, he also had an open tight end on a corner route to the back pylon. It was dealer's choice on that one. Unfortunately, Chase wasn't able to hit either one. And so Michael Hughes missed from 42 earlier. He has never made a field goal at the collegiate level. He may not have a kick bigger than this. From 29 for the lead. The field goal is good. And with 8.05 to go in the fourth, App State takes a 17-14 lead. What a big time kick by Michael Hughes. Send his team up by three midway through the fourth quarter. Football is presented by Slade, the TV you love for a price you'll love. Anish Roth, Brock Osweiler, Taylor McGregor, two weeks in a row. App State has had a crucial fourth quarter drop last week on a two point conversion that would have given them the lead late against Carolina. Today, a surefire touchdown 
to a wide open Christian Wells. He dropped it instead. The Mountaineers settle for three. AM took the last kick back for a touchdown. Not this time. They'll bring it out to the 25. It'll be Haynes King coming out to lead the offense and Brock, an offense that has not run a play since the 903 mark of the third quarter. Partner. I sure I sure have never been a part of a football game that I had to sit on the sideline that long. I don't think I've ever seen a football game where an offense was on the sideline that long. Hopefully they redid pregame warm ups before this drive to get that sweat going again and get juiced up for this drive. First possession of the fourth quarter. And Haynes King the last one into the huddle. Flanked by Smith and a chain speed option. Ball comes out, A-Chain falls on it, back inside his own 20. Listen, we know King, he's down here on this play. We know he's super talented. We know he's young. We know he needs to grow. But sometimes you need to know when the play is over, and you cannot put ball in the harm's way. I know he was down here, but he's flirting with danger. Yeah, his knee was down, and you flirt with danger too often. Danger eventually comes up for coffee. Look for them to try to get Anaya Smith. His hands on the ball, A-chain. King down the seam. Incomplete for Marshall, who had a step on his man. And that's what Coach Fisher says King does best besides use his speed and his feet. He throws a great, great deep ball. You see there him just putting a little too much velocity on that and getting a few yards out in front of his receiver. Now there's going to be a lot of chatter around the quarterback position for Texas A&M after this game, win or lose. Keep your eyes at the top of the screen, Nick Hampton. number 18 five yard penalty third down the right tackle fathery Taylor App State linebacker Trey Cobb we saw him injured earlier on in the game went to the locker room came back out in his sling I'm told upper body injury questionable to return we've talked about it all game here AM's talented but you can't beat yourself and you've seen that time and time again today another false start making it third and 20 it was already a tough enough task App State rushes three, drops eight. King escaping, throws across the field. It's caught by Stewart. Ball comes out. He looked to be down. It'll be ruled incomplete. No catch. There's a flag back at the 15 yard line. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 35 defense. Down. The penalty is on Jalen McLeod. And Taylor brought up the injury to Cobb. Brendan Harrington is out. That's why McLeod is in the game. Listen, you talk about App State and how they play with such great energy, such great toughness. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one there. That looks like a defensive player just playing ball there. I sure wouldn't have thrown that flag. Oh. Nothing malicious about that play. Just a a guy playing playing through the whistle. On first down, King over the middle, and Stewart's there for a gain of five. Evan Stewart, his fourth catch. Five-star freshman, top 15 recruit. Jimbo Fisher or Jimbo Fisher said in spring ball he's never had a freshman wideout shine the way number one did. And you're seeing this offense be patient. They have to. That defense is gassed. Yeah, I think a and trying to play for the final possession. They don't want to give this ball back to App State, who has ran the ball all day, and the Aggies have had zero answer for it. 
On second down, four-man rush. King finding Stewart into Mountaineer territory, a gain of 18. Great to hear Stewart's name today. Really excited to watch this kid play. Only a true freshman out of Frisco, Texas. But I tell you what, when you turn on the film last week and watch him against Sam Houston State, you see star talent all around this guy. Huge catch radius, great vertical speed. Very excited to see what Evan Stewart does throughout his career. And now five catches in his first two collegiate games apiece. To the outside, space, and it's A-Chain who's out of bounds. The layoff has not hurt the Aggies prior to this drive. They hadn't had an offensive snap since the 9.03 mark of the third quarter. You know, and sometimes I don't want to dwell on that third down play, but sometimes you need a play like that to spark your offense. Like I said, I didn't think it was a foul, but Jalen McLeod needs to be smart there and realize there's no benefit to hitting the quarterback once the ball is gone. King held the mesh too long, and A-Chain gets sandwiched. Logan Dublin first in there. Quarterback just needs to make a decision there. Either put it in his belly and pull it and keep it yourself, or let the running back take the ball, one of your best players in A-Chain, and let him do what he does. King just needs to be decisive and make a quick decision and live with it. Second and 11, a loss of a yard. Donovan Green, the freshman tight end. And a timeout by Jimbo Fisher, his first of the half. We're in the end game now. 435 to go in regulation. AM in App State territory. ESPN College Football presented by Sling TV. Strap in. Four and a half to go in regulation. 17-14 App State. How did we get here? Well, some sloppy play by AM. They've committed a few turnovers. Henry Pearson, the tight end, giving the Mountaineers a one-score lead. And suing kickoff, Devin A. Chain. Gone. House call. Kick return TD. App State comes back. A long drive culminates in a field goal after a touchdown pass was dropped. And now the Aggies moving second and 11 from the 34-yard line of Appalachian State. Hayes King over the middle, and he threw it behind Anaya Smith. Haynes King had an open receiver, just threw it behind him. And now third and 11, and uh, remember, the Aggies, they've got a new kicker as well in Caden Davis. They do, and he's not exactly, you know, game tested. But, you know, I'll say this with Haynes King, you know, as, as much hype as he's had, you know, we know he's young. We know he doesn't have many career starts, but the guy's got a ton of talent. He's a winner. He's a state champion in high school with a program that hadn't won one in 80-plus years, and he's just been a little bit off today like you saw in that last pass. Third and 11. Hampton off the edge. King throws. Open receiver as man fell down. Yul Keith Brown wide open. And Brock, that throw again, a little bit behind. Brown had to go back for it. It's fourth down. And here comes Davis for a field goal try to tie this game at 17. Yeah, that's the difference, though, with Haynes King. If he's able to get that ball out in front, shoot, we might have a touchdown there. For sure we have a first down, but there was a lot of open field for the receiver to run down the field and make a big-time play. A 47-yarder for Davis. Last week, one for two. Made it from 40, missed from 52. No good! Oh, my. Sean Clark fired up. Oh, my. App State in a 100,000-seat building against a top-10 team. And we got a missed field goal in the late stages of the game. Anish, what do we have going here? Snap looks good. Nobody tipped it. Hold looks good.
Boy, it looked like a clean operation, except for the kick. It's kind of when you have the perfect club on a par three. Swing feels good, but somehow the result just didn't end up how you thought it was going to. App State with the ball from its own 30. 3.43 to go. Texas A&M's got two timeouts. Peoples moves the pile, a gain of four, second and six. App State's now in four-minute offense. You're going to see a lot of two tight end sets. You know they're going to run the ball. They've been... That's what they really lay their hat on. And, and that's the identity of this offense, regardless of situations, is how well they run the ball. AM has not been able to stop them yet today. They got to find a way, whether it's pressure, twists up front, stunts up front inside, to cause havoc in the backfield. App State bleeding the clock. Peoples hammerheads his way to the 40. And he appears to have enough for a first down. And that's just attitude right there. That's a running back saying, hey, I want it more than you want it. I'm going to hit you, and I'm going to go find two, three, four more yards after first contact. Very impressive. 16 carries, 64 yards for Peoples. An 1,100-yard rusher two years ago. 900-plus last year, and Nate Noel, the top rusher in the Sun Belt, did not play today out with an ankle injury. Yeah, don't forget, Cameron Peoples is 225 pounds. The guy is made for situations like this. The ruling on the field is a first down. The previous, previous play is under further review. So they will look at the spot. Generally speaking, these plays have been hard to overturn. Jimbo Fisher, two timeouts left. 2.25 to go. Go back to 2007 when App State had one of the great upsets in the history of college football. I know if it's on your bingo card, you've already checked it off. They knock off number five Michigan at the big house. That was David over Goliath. David has been in the weight room since then. David has beefed up. David has had a few protein shakes. This game, while it would be an upset and a major one to knock off a top 10 team, it's not going to resonate or reverb like that. And I say that with the utmost respect for App State. That's a testament to where App State is as a program. If they end up pulling this off, yeah, it's obviously a big deal to beat a top 10 team on the road, especially in this building, especially this team with this talent, with what Texas A&M has. But App State has, has shown they can hang with the big boys now for the better part of 15 years. Partner, i got to be honest. I'm not surprised with where this game is at right now, and it's for one reason. It's the culture that is with inside the building at App State. Sean Clark, the head coach for the Mountaineers, not only did he play for App State, but he has truly carried on the traditions and the culture that got started decades ago with this Mountaineers football program, and it truly is a special one. And I'll, I'll tell you this, that sideline right now for App State, they're not surprised where, they, where they're at. They expect to win every single football game that they play, and they're not surprised right now. I promise you that. Chase Bryce, I asked him specifically about the upsets, and he told me, listen, we want to create our own legacy. We don't dwell on the past. Yeah, we know about the Michigan game. We know about some of the other big-time games this program has been in, but we want to create our own legacy, and they have the confidence that they're able to do so. I go back to what Sean Clark told us yesterday. We don't care where we're playing. We might as well play the Dallas Cowboys. They thrive off these atmospheres and these environments. And few places in the country are tougher to play in than Kyle Field. Coach said there's no emblems on their opponent. They don't care who they play. They'll go anywhere, anytime, and play any opponent. App State's not going to back down to anyone. Let's go back to this review. They've been looking at this an awfully, uh, an awful long time. After further review, the ball carrier did not make the line to gain. Wow. It'll be third in inches. The game clock will start. I'm not ready for play. So they reverse the call 
And instead of first and dent, first and ten from the 40, third and inches, 225 to go. And you know what? Sean Clark has two plays right now. If they don't get it on third and inches, they're going to go for it on fourth down. He's probably looking at this as I've got two plays to maybe win the game. I think what you need to look for here, are you going to let Cameron Peoples at 225 pounds run downhill? Because that's what everyone thinks is going to happen. Or do you let Chase Bryce fake it and boot outside the pocket to try to pick up this first down? Timeout now by Texas A&M. The Aggies have one left. Start doing the clock math. If App State picks up a first down, boy, it makes it close to impossible for Texas A&M. This season, All State will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by a participating university's general fund with a donation. Thank you. Yeah, and he up the clock. If App State's able to pick up this first down here with two minutes and 25 seconds to go in the game, with the Aggies only having one remaining timeout, puts a lot of stress on that defense. I'd expect right here to see possibly an all-out pressure by the A&M defense to make sure that they can hold App State here and try to get that ball back for their offense. Peoples, the running back in the pistol behind Bryce. Two tight ends stacked to the right. Robinson in motion. Peoples straight ahead. He got it. He got it. Would it be anyone else on a third and short? Peoples says he has it. Cooper Hodges signals first down. No signal from the officials until now. There it is. One line official kind of ran in, showing it was a first down. The other official at the bottom of your screen almost had him short. Obviously, they had a conversation and said that was a first down. And that's certainly how it looked, looked up here to us. Less than two minutes to go. Clock running. AM has one timeout, and it's a first down for Appalachian State. Peoples to the outside, stiff arm in the open field. Cameron Peoples still going. Touchdown. No, he went out of bounds. He stepped out at the 12 yard line. What a run by Cameron all day. Just sticking his nose in the trenches, getting two yards, four yards, five yards. And what do you know? Wearing down that AM defense, and finally, late in the fourth quarter, busts the big one. I'll say this, partner. We've talked a lot about the talent on the AM defense, offense, their recruiting class. But the one thing that you can't measure is heart. And I tell you what, App State has a ton of it. Jimbo Fisher said all week the experience of App State scared him. Fourth, fifth, sixth year guys, and you know what? May actually be a saving grace that he didn't score. There's Peoples. He'll go right down. AM's got the one timeout, and there's 90 seconds to go. And the Aggies use their final timeout. 131 left. Jimbo Fisher was shaking his head. You never say never, right? We learned that last week just watching App State. Last week, a wild one against North Carolina. But, oh, we remember this. 2007, Michigan was up 14-7. to App State, three touchdowns to end the first half. They kept the lead for the remainder of the game. They block the potential game-winning field goal attempt. That was the last time App State beat a top 10 team. In fact, since that Michigan win, they didn't beat a ranked team till knocking off Coastal Carolina at home last year. The Chanticleers were ranked in the top 15 at the time. And now a chance to take down Texas A&M. The slingshot travels from Boone yet again.
you got to give so much credit to the mentality and culture in Boone, North Carolina and App State. They showed up yesterday off the bus, and you could tell they weren't just excited for a football game. They felt like they could come to College Station and win a football game. This will send shockwaves through the A&M program. Preseason number six, a star-studded freshman class. There is going to be a championship window for Texas A&M. Make no mistake. It doesn't look like it's going to happen this year. But when you start looking at next year, at 2024, when these young studs have a little more seasoning, Jimbo Fisher knows he'll have a contender. The challenge this year was, can the freshmen grow up quickly? And they still have a question mark, Brock, and a big one right now, a quarterback. Well, A&M's filled with potential. But at the end of the Time day, out. on game day, State. potential the means nothing. The half. These guys half. need to go and do it. They need to do it in practice. They need to do it in the weight room. The Aggies need to do it in the film room. And right now, they're not doing that. We need to give all the credit in the world to the App State Mountaineers because they came in to here in front of 100,000, silenced this place, and they did it with grit, toughness, and physicality. They ran the football and controlled this game from the start. 47 seconds. It's third down and 13. A lot of fans have started to file out of Kyle Field. Bryce backpedals and goes down. And they can run this all the way down until there's about two seconds and then you can call one more play and the ball game is over and you're wondering why Chase Bryce isn't just taking that quick knee he's trying to milk the clock because he realizes he could give it back to A&M with a couple seconds and so he's trying to get as much time as he possibly can off that clock very heads up play by the fifth year senior Chase Bryce. Since 2010, AM had only one home loss against teams from outside the Big 12 and the SEC. They're going to have to put some time back on the clock. It's a delay of game. The game is not over. Please reset the game clock to two seconds. And App State will call one play. Chase Bryce will make sure those two seconds run off. And barring some unforeseen disaster. App State's going to head back to Boone with a win against the number six team in the country. I can promise you right now, Kevin Barbe, offensive coordinator, is talking to his offensive line saying, stay stout, don't take a single play for granted. There's been goofy things that have happened in the past. I can think of Herm Edwards with the Eagles. A wild play back in the day. So the game is never over till zero's on the clock. And if anybody knows that, it's App State with the wild finish they had against North Carolina just last week. No question. But the best best news is you have a veteran quarterback. I promise you he's talking to his center right now. They will secure this snap, protect the ball, and walk away with this monumental victory. Troy Everett, the redshirt freshman center, the new starter on the O-line. Bryce takes it. Falls to the ground, and Appalachian State has done it again. They wow. come to College Station, and they take down the number six team in the country. What a dominant performance by the Mountaineers. So much heart, so much passion. of an upset.
for starters, App State had the ball for 41 and a half minutes. Texas A&M, 18 and a half minutes. App State ran 82 plays. A&M, just 38. Down to the field, in the madness with Taylor McGregor. Coach, you just upset the number six team in the country. What is going through your head? I'm so proud of our program and what we've been. Last week was tough, and this week is about believing. Believe in one another, believe in this program, believe in our fans. These players, they get all the credit. It was just enough coach not to screw it up. You had the confidence at halftime that your team was going to pull this off. Why? I have a lot of confidence in myself and this team, this program. That we'll go play anybody, anywhere, anytime. And we came into College Station and beat the number six team in the country. How, how cool is that? Without your leading rusher, how would you describe what you saw out of your running back room as a whole today? And we're very deep with that position. Very deep that position. It's next man up mentality. Next man mentality, and uh, man, I'm lost for words. I wish my wife and my kids were here, my little son Braxton. It's unbelievable. You're getting emotional. Yeah. What's going through your head? I, I love this program. It uh, means everything to me. And we, we had, we've uh, lost three in a row, and that's hard at Appalachian State. But to win here, man, hey. God is good, and we're going to have one hell of a time on that plane ride back to Boone tonight. I love it. You controlled the clock. How much of a game plan was that for you guys that you needed to possess the clock? Yeah, well, that was part of our keys to victory. It was part of, we had to make sure we got the third down on defense. We had to run the ball on offense, and our kids believed. And you go back for 30 some years, this program believes we can win, and all credit goes to our players, our fans for coming out here. It was an awesome experience. Congratulations, Coach. I'm ready go to go to G-Doc tonight down the lake. <laughs> Anish. Uh, they're going to breathe some cool, fresh mountain air when they get to Boone. This was a team that suffered heartbreak a week ago at home to North Carolina, losing a game they felt they should have won. Brock to bounce back in this arena against this team. What does it say about who App State is? App State, they're resilient. And I think Sean Clark's emotions say everything about what App State's program is all about, what their culture is about. They take great pride in what they do, who they are. This is a special football team, Anish. And a special moment for a program that's made a habit of this. A program that goes into a 100,000-seat building and comes out with a win against a top-10 opponent. Again, App State 17, Texas A&M 14, your final. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the Southeastern Conference.